Thanks to Arculus for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hey, what's up? Pretty good. You wanna know about TVs? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I got time. So if you're watching this, I'm sure you can relate to what just happened. You're either tech support for your family and get these questions all the time about like what tech, what TV your family should be getting up, or on the opposite end of that, and you're the person making the call trying to get a sense of this kind of technology and seemingly is getting more and more confusing every year. But that's what this video is for, help you understand the differences when it comes to TVs, specifically between two of the biggest technologies out there, QLED and OLED, and hopefully demystify that tech for you and figure out which TV you want to get. And buying a new TV is not something you do every year, but these sets are getting better and better. And what we have right now is huge technological changes over what existed four or five years ago. So if you're in the market for a new set and looking at those two technologies, let me tell you what to expect. So for this reference, as of this filming, this is the most up-to-date version of TCL's 4K 5 Series QLED TV. And also Sony's OLED TV, it's the A90J in a 65 inch size. So I made a similar video last year, but in that span, the tech has changed and evolved. But here's a quick refresher about the technology. OLED is generally a more expensive technology. So the conception is that's going to be better. OLED is a better TV to get, but that is not necessarily true. QLED brings a lot of cool technology to the table that oftentimes can literally outshine what OLED can do. So let's talk about the tech. Starting with the one you're most likely familiar with, OLED. Uh, it stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Basically what that means is that each and every pixel in OLED TV is acting as its own light source. Think of it like millions of teeny tiny RGB light bulbs that can go on and off and then change color independently. Uh, so QLED, on the other hand, is basically a really high quality LCD panel with an equally fancy name. Um, so QLED stands for Quantum Light Emitting Diode. In the TV world, quantum simply means smaller light emitting diodes uh, and a lot of them. So additionally, QLED TVs, the quantum is referring to specifically, uh, a tiny layer of dots that reflect either red or green or blue when you shine light on them. So this is help going to enhance the colors that like a regular old school LCD panel would normally produce. So there are a few companies that are producing QLED technology. So here we're using one of, again, TCL's top of the line QLED sets as our example. But Samsung is probably best known and sort of competing at the highest end of QLED, whereas Hisense is competing more at the bottom end uh, of QLED and TCL kind of right in the middle. Samsung, one of the world's like preeminent technology manufacturers is really pot committed to QLED. They've been refining this technology for years. So this is not a technology that's going to go away or not be here in a few years if you decide to go for the QLED route. Samsung is committed and QLED sets from them are really leading the charge. All right, so there's a reason that OLEDs are so loved and there's also a reason why they're more expensive. So I think LG and Sony have sort of been leading the charge on the OLED front. So actually the TV we're using for this reference is a top of the line Sony OLED, uh, but the panel is actually made by LG with sort of Sony's tech on top of it. So hopefully you'll get the best representation of what OLED can bring and sort of the newest representation of what QLED can bring uh, with TCL. So while QLED technology does have advantages and we will talk about them, there are some areas where it just can't compete uh, with OLED. So OLEDs have a crazy thin panel due to not having the whole backlight panel you see in most LED TVs. So some OLED panels have the main hardware box even in a separate box, not attached to the rear of the TV. So you can put this thing against the wall and have it be almost totally flush. And from a sheer design standpoint, OLED manufacturers can do a lot more. And since it has individual diodes that can light up independently, that also means each diode can independently turn off. So that's how OLEDs are getting their top tier black levels. They're just turned off. LED panels try to produce black levels through 
very, very dim light and sometimes come across as dark gray or hazy, which you may see in some QLED panels. Uh, OLEDs, again, are producing their deep black colors by just not emitting any light at all. And because of those diodes, you can have nearly unlimited viewing angles. No matter what angle you are sitting at, the TV is going to look its, its peak beauty. There's no shift of color or dimming when you sort of shift and look at it from the side. Even at extreme angles, it looks exactly the same as if you're viewing it straight on. It's also gonna give you incredibly high response time. So if you're watching fast moving movies or sports, there'll be no motion blur, or little to no uh, motion blur at all. But it's not always perfect because each diode is emitting its own light. There is a limit to how much light each one can put out. And this is really the biggest problem with OLED. It results in a bright picture, but not nearly as bright as what Kula can produce. Now, to be fair, when you're putting something lit up next to something perfectly black, it tends to look a little bit brighter, but this can become a problem if you're in a really well-lit room with a lot of direct sunlight coming in and maybe sun hitting your display. Uh, an OLED display can look dim or even sometimes washed out. If you're in an area where you can control your light, have a little bit less light coming in, OLED's going to look absolutely amazing. But again, it still will not be uh, as bright as what you get from QLEDs. Uh, another potentially big disadvantage from OLED that's not really plaguing newer generation OLEDs, but definitely did in the early days, uh, is burn it. If you watch sort of the same thing all the time, it can burn itself in. So if you're watching sports, news, or playing games that have graphics stationary for a long period of time, there's a very slight chance of burn it. Now, most OLED TVs have sort of ways to mitigate this, but that will not be a problem with QLED. They don't suffer from burn-in. So a small concern, but definitely one to consider. And obviously the last one here is generally the price is much higher on OLEDs. Now Samsung is competing at a very similar price, QLED to OLED, uh, but the rest of the QLED line generally tends to come in much less expensive uh, than a comparable OLED. So I've talked a lot, especially on social media, uh, about cryptocurrencies. I'm a very active investor in cryptocurrency, and I'm doing my best to learn NFTs. Uh, and one of the things that's terrifying about the space, aside from really being brand new, is there are a lot of security risks. You hear of cryptocurrencies being just stolen in the middle of the night, and due to the anonymity of wallets, it's almost impossible to track those down. So to help alleviate a lot of those concerns, there are these things called hard wallets or sometimes cold wallets that can take your cryptocurrency keys offline. So you're not storing it in a Coinbase or other exchanges. You actually physically are holding it so that nobody can actually get to it online. And probably the best way to do that is with Arculus. It's a cold storage wallet combining with the world's strongest air gap security with an easy to use app. So the whole product is made up of essentially two parts that work together. So there's a physical Arculus key card. It kind of looks like a credit card. And then it works in conjunction with the mobile Arculus wallet app. You've got a physical metal card that is just like dripping with security. And you make transactions pretty cool. You actually tap the key card to the back of your phone uh, using NFC and then transactions are done uh, fully encrypted and they're obviously stored on the card which you can put anywhere you'd like. The wallet app built in is also actually relatively easy to use and it lets you buy and swap directly from that app, let you do it in seconds, and then get it over to your Arculus physical card. Uh, but if you're looking to get serious and you're looking for long-term investments and long-term holds, you want to get that currency off of the exchanges. And a system like Arculus is a really solid way to go. The convenience of a physical sort of hard wallet that you can hold and see, with also the convenience of being able to actually buy and trade and sign those transactions in real time. The three-factor authentication, I really, really like to have. If you want to check it out or pick one up for yourself, hit the link down below. A uh, pretty sweet promo going on there as well. All right, so let's talk more about QLED because they can do a lot of things really well. Uh, they can produce an extremely bright image that is insanely color accurate right up until peak brightness. Uh, this allows for very impressive HDR images and you'll never have to worry about burning when it comes to QLED. So whereas OLED's got the advantage with black levels, QLED clearly has the advantage with brightness and oftentimes color representation uh, as well. And it's gonna depend on the content that you're watching. But I think this part boils down to where your TV is going to be and how much light is going to be hitting it. And secondary to that is the price. 
you can get many, many more QLED sets for way less than a comparable size OLED is gonna cost you. But it's not all perfect uh, with QLED because it's a backlit panel, it's definitely not gonna be as thin as OLED. And there are still models that allow you to mount this flush to a wall, don't get me wrong, uh, but you're not gonna get that razor thin display like you will with an OLED. And again, because it's backlit panel, you're not gonna produce the black levels you can get from an OLED. So generally you're gonna get some variation of gray representing black. Uh, viewing angles also are not nearly as good compared to OLED. Black levels, like I said, become faded as you sort of step more to the extreme angles. You can also have blooming, where there's sort of a halo of sorts around very bright objects. Uh, in the more expensive QLED TVs, this is definitely less of an issue uh, versus the less expensive models, but it's something that does exist in the whole QLED family. All right, so that's advantages and disadvantages of QLED versus OLED. And as you shop for TVs, you might hear other technologies start to be thrown out there. Things like mini LED and micro LED. It's like a grab bag of words they're just throwing together for marketing TV terms. We'll talk more about that in another video, but these are more future technologies that exist right now, but they exist in generally smaller, very expensive uh, packages. So to spoil it down, mini LED is like the next gen of QLED and micro LED is like the next generation of OLED kind of. Very confusing because these words sound almost identical. Technology is not quite ready for mass adoption yet, but we're gonna get there soon. So I do wanna be clear though, that a lot of those disadvantages I mentioned about QLEDs are not gonna be noticeable to most people. And the gap in quality between QLED and OLED has gotten really small. It's really hard to tell a difference unless you are like sitting in Best Buy, staring at both of these on a wall, looking at them next to each other. But if we are talking about picture quality, I'd say OLED wins hands down. Uh, no other TV tech is going to produce the black levels an OLED can. And if you ever stood in front of an OLED TV, trust me, this video that you can see right here is not doing it justice. You have to see one in person to appreciate how amazing they are, and how incredible the images they are producing. But in all other aspects, I think QLED is gonna to appeal to more people. Not only is it more affordable, you don't have to worry about burning, and with QLED, you're still getting really vibrant colors, great contrast, amazing brightness levels that come from those sort of really bright whites that make the images just absolutely pop. And again, unless you have both sets sitting side by side, it is not likely the average person will see much of a difference uh, at all. And remembering that QLED is still a new technology and the leaps it's made from where it starts, where it is today, is really incredible. And with each iteration, it gets closer and closer to OLED quality. And as time goes on, it's getting even more difficult to tell the difference between the two. So you have to figure out which one you want to get. And I think for me, what I tell people is how much light do you have where your room is and how much budget do you have to spend? If you have the budget and you don't have direct sunlight coming in, go OLED and you're gonna absolutely love it. If you wanna save a little bit of money and still have a beautiful picture, or you have a lot of sunlight coming in, QLED is going to be an amazing choice. And whichever set you get from whichever manufacturer, you're going to get an amazing picture. You're gonna get images that are going to look unlike anything you've ever seen before. And I guarantee you as much thought as you're giving towards TVs now, whenever you put whatever you buy up on the wall, you're gonna love it. <laughs>